Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to Under the Cuff. Uh, today's Under the Cuff, I am wearing my Omega Seamaster uh, reference 2531.80.00. Uh, I did review it here, so if you want, go ahead and take a look at that review. Uh, it is uh, the original Bond watch. Um, not, it is the automatic version that came out after the quartz. Uh, so, uh, 1993, Pierce Brosnan wore the quartz, and then uh, they released the automatic uh, versions afterwards. Uh, so, in the next movies, Pierce Brosnan was wearing this reference. Um, and the reason why I'm wearing this watch, well, honestly, it's become more of a daily watch, but uh, Omega did release their new uh, Omega Seamaster Diver 300M, um, but the 007 edition. So uh, the new James Bond trailer did drop recently, and coinciding with that trailer, Omega also released uh, their new Bond watch. So this is the watch that uh, James Bond will wear in No Time to Die. If you haven't seen the trailer, it's looking pretty good. Uh, I had my doubts initially because there seemed to be a lot of issues with the script and uh, casting. And it seemed like there wasn't a really uh, thought out plan for this movie. But I'm probably going to go watch it and uh, I'm going to give it a chance. So... Um, but let's get back into this watch here. So <clears throat> they did release this watch and first reaction is I love that faux patina. Um, it, it's just, it looks really good. Uh, I can't wait to see it in person. Um, once I see it in person, uh, I think um, either I might like it better or the same. Um, it, they for gone their their uh, Omega Seamaster bracelet for a mesh bracelet here what that is pretty cool um, I don't know how I feel about that as well I'd like to try it on before casting my judgment on it because if we uh, scroll down further on their site um, it does say it is uh, their unique design uh, let's take a look at the price here Ooh. Although I love the watch, I don't love the price. Uh, it's 11500 Canadian without taxes. Um, yeah. Um, I, it, to be honest with you, even though it's a titanium watch, it's a bond watch as well. Um, I, I, I'm not entirely sure if I'd pay that much. Um, I am a bond fan, but I don't think... Um, I'd just go out and buy this, especially because if you take a look at Rolex uh, steel sports models, appreciate uh, for the most part, or they stay the same. Uh, with the Omegas, um, if you take a look at them on the used market, they do depreciate in value. So I'm not entirely sure if I'd spend that kind of money on this one new. Uh, some of their other um, Seamasters, the ones that came out in or announced in, in Basel World 2018. Uh, those are uh, half the cost um, and they look just as nice. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the case back here. Um, pretty cool case back 007 up here. Um, from If we scroll down, they'll uh, talk about what these numbers actually mean. Uh, 62 is the year I believe Dr. No came out. Um, We'll, we'll scroll down. I think I read that there as well. Uh, but it also looks like it comes with like a watch fold. So that's pretty cool. I think um, probably too bad we can't see what's on the inside. Uh, but it should come with a tool, uh, a, a secure place to keep your watch. Um, maybe room for another strap. But let's go ahead and uh, scroll down and take a look, look at the description. So it is identical to 007's watch in No Time to Die. It's 42 millimeters. Um, it's strong and lightweight. It's a grade two ti titanium sports. Um, yeah, a brown tropical aluminum bezel. Really love that bezel. Um, 
Yeah, so right here, engraved on the case back is a series of numbers which follows the exact format for genuine military issue watches, including the number 62, which refers to the year of the fir very first James Bond film, Dr. No. It is slightly slimmer than the standard divers or Omega Seamasters that they've released. Um, I wonder what that thickness is if... Uh, too bad they don't give us that information the technical data uh, and they have the coaxial master chronometer movement 8806 which is uh, really nice and house movement by Omega so let's just go ahead and take a look at um, it's still a 20 millimeter um, lug width so if you do have another Omega Seamaster your bracelet will fit on it uh, so that's pretty cool um, water resistance everything's the same um, nothing really changed there uh, they do have a bunch of strap options uh, let's just take a look uh, this is a beige polyester strap uh, I went through them quickly here and they are all NATO's um, to be honest I'm not sure if, if I'd purchased any NATO's from Omega for this watch uh, they're I kind of like the bracelet. I like the mesh bracelet, and I do like the Omega Seamaster bracelet as well. Um, and let's see if there's anything else down here. Yeah. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at the Seamaster line, I guess. Uh, I do really like it on actually this NATO. It looks pretty good, but that mesh bracelet is phenomenal. Uh, here's another Bond Watch uh, Seamaster. Um, but if you guys had a choice of any of these Seamasters, please let me know what you'd choose. Um, considering I have the original Bond watch with the blue wave dial, I don't think uh, I'd go for another blue dialed uh, version of the Omega Seamaster. I do like the white dial with the black bezel, bezel right here. Um, it looks pretty cool. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Uh, like I said, so far I really like this watch, but uh, I think I'm going to take a look at it at my local AD and uh, get a better opinion there uh, once it's released. Um, if you like this video, please like and share it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, also, follow me on Instagram under LeCuff, uh, where I can snap off a few wrist shots a lot easier than making these videos. Uh, but yeah, this was a, just a quick reaction uh, video for the Omega Seamaster uh, new Bond watch. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.